Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we're going to talk about exponents a little bit. Um, the little number on the side, we're going to do uh, this lesson about positive exponents. So what is an exponent? Um, and I, I am told that my accent from Canada, I call them exponents, and apparently everyone else calls them exponents exponents or exponents or something like that, but basically we're talking about the same thing and it's that little number right there on the top. All right, that's the exponent and then this larger number would be called the base. So we have the base and the exponent. So what does an exponent mean? When you have a base of 5 raised to the power of 2, this is also, by the way, another way of saying it, raised to the power of 2 or raised to the power of something. What that means is 5 times itself that many times. All right? So it means 5 times 5. And you see how the, the power of 2 means that it's multiplied 2 times. It does not mean 5 times 2. This is the most common mistake that I see with exponents. 5 to the power of 2 is definitely not 5 times 2. Remember, it's 5 times itself that many times. All right? So 5 times 5 is 5 to the power of 2. So there's 2 times. All right? It's not 5 times 2. Very common mistake. Um, I just wanted to address that as something not to do. All right? So let's practice a little bit with some numbers just so that we can see exactly um, what we're talking about here. So we'll start off, again, 5 to the power of 2 is 5 times 5, which is equal to 25. All right, so 5 to the power of 2, 5 2 times, and that's going to give us 25. Um, five, 2, let's go over here, 2 to the power of 3 means 2 times 2 times 2. See, the, the number 3 up here means how many times are we multiplying the base times itself. And 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So 2 to the power of 3, or 2 cubed, we call that, is 8. 3 squared, or 3 to the power of 2, 3 with an exponent of 2 means 3 times 3 which is equal to 9. All right, again, how many times do we multiply the base, multiply times itself? Two times, so that would be 3 times 3. 12 to the power of 1, and I wanted to, I put this example in here just to, to show you, and it may seem silly, but 12 to the power of 1 is just 12. All right, any number raised to the power of 1 is just equal to that number. Again, it's not 12 times 1, it's just 12. You just write down 12. All right, so any number raised to the power of 1 is just that number. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about negative numbers. There's two different types of negative numbers, and we have to remember when we're using the exponents that we always remember the order of operations. The first thing in order of operations is the parentheses, but then exponents get solved first, then multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. And you'll see why this, um, this will make a little bit more sense in just one second when we talk about the two types of negative questions you could get. This is one of the types of negatives. You can have negative 2 to the power of 4. Now, when you see this, written like this, you have to solve the exponent first. This negative 2 is kind of like that negative is being applied afterwards. So what this means is negative 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or we could put in parentheses here that we're doing the multiplication first or the exponent first, then we are taking care of that negative. So it's a little bit different um, than, than what I'm going to show you in just a minute. So that's, again, a common error when you see negative and then 2 to the power of 4. You solve 2 to the power of 4 first, and then you apply the negative. So it doesn't matter how many numbers you have here, even odd, um, it doesn't really matter. Your result is always going to be negative if you have the negative and then an exponent. Solve the exponent first, then apply the negative. The other type of negative question is like this one 
where you have negative 2 raised to the power of 4. Now that means something very different. That means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Do you see the difference? This one here, everything inside of the parentheses gets raised to the power of 4. So it's negative 2 times negative 2, which would give you positive 4, times negative 2, which would give you negative 8, times negative 2, which would give you a positive 16. All right. The rule with this type of question is if the exponent is even, the number will be positive. If the exponent is odd, the number, the final answer will be negative. Again, everything inside the parentheses is raised to that power. So those are the two different types of questions that you'll get with negatives. And those often give people a little bit of trouble. So make sure to keep your eye out for those. The next thing I want to talk about is zeros. There's a lot of rules with, with exponents, as you're, you're starting to see, I'm, I'm sure. When you raise something to the power of zero, it is equal to one. That's always the case. It doesn't matter what number it is. It can be 15 to the power of zero. It can be 3 to the power of zero. It can be 100 to the power of zero, 4 to the power of zero, negative 2 to the power of zero. Notice the negative 2 inside of parentheses raised to the power of 0. All right, all these things raised to the power of 0 will give you 1. All right, any number raised to the power of 0 gives you 1. Now, what happens when we throw in a variable? So we've got the variable, in this case, x equals 7. So this is 3x to the power of 3. We have to remember the order of operations. And, and that's why it's very important that we do this in order. What that means is 3 times 7 to the power of 3. We know that the exponents get solved first, then we do the multiplication. So what happens here is that first we will solve 7 to the power of 3, then we will multiply 3 times that result. All right. Again, a common mistake here would be to say, oh, 3 times 7 is 21, and 21 to the power of 3. And 21 to the power of 3 is going to give you a number like 9,000 something. It's a really big number. That's not what we're asking. First you solve the exponents, then you do the multiplying at the end. All right. Okay. Now, one more question that shows the importance of order of operations. If we've got like 2 to the power of 3 plus 9, to the power of 2. With this type of question, you want to make sure to solve the exponents first and then add at the end. So first we'll solve the exponents, again moving left to right, so 2 to the power of 3 is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, plus 9 to the power of 2, 9 to the power of 2, or 9 squared, 9 times 9 is 81, and then we add those two together at the end, 8 plus 81 is 89. So that's how we would solve remembering to keep the order of operations true. So that's it for positive exponents. Just remember, whatever our base is raised to the power of something, that means the base is multiplied times itself that many times. So 10 to the power of 11 is listed here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Whew, I could count when I set it up. That's good. All right, so that's it for positive exponents. Hopefully this lesson's been helpful for you, and you can watch back through it to get a review of positive and negative numbers raised to positive exponents, raised to the power of 0, and raised to the power of 1.